Bumps and bruises, scratches and scrapes, some of the ingredients that a good life makes. But sorrows become success. And as we aim for the top, we will pause if we must, but we will never stop. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. This is a safe space to share your stories. Tonight, my guest is an unapologetically bold, vivacious woman who recently upped the ante by becoming one of the oldest pageant contestants in Miss Universe Jamaica history. She's a doctor. She's a divorcee. She's a wife. She's a lover. She's a fighter. She's a trailblazer. She's an example of living your life out so loud that the entire world can hear you. Dr. Sandra Swaby is my guest in the big chair tonight. And I bid you, hola, welcome. Hola, back. Howdy. Gracias. As, si hablas español. Si. Fluentemente. No? Estudié en Cuba. I know, I know. Yeah. I learned that about you when we spoke and yeah. so much more. We had a great conversation. We did. We did. When I called you, you were cooking. Yes, love to cook. And I said to you, how was your day? And you said it was very challenging. And as I was about to say, I'm so sorry, you said, but that's how I love them. Yeah. And immediately I got uh, a sense, more of a sense of who you were. You said you had gone to work that day and... Um, you'd, you'd come away with the lesson that your staff depended on you, but you depended on them too. Yes. And yes. you had your prayer meeting and you guys affirmed yes. and you worked through yes. your kinks. And I was like, wow, this is so super cool. Mm -hmm. That is about people. It is. That's who you are at your core. You're about it people. Is. It is. Where did that come from? And, and like a tear just came to <laughs> my eye when I remember the day because I have the most amazing team that works with me nurses, the front desk staff, and I tell them every day that I cannot do this by myself. Mm -hmm. They are my rock, and then we have our clients to serve, and so we work through things together with the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And it's always so amazing to see when everything comes to great. You say you have to be mindful not only of the people you interact with, but of the souls you yes. serve. Oh my God, crazy, crazy. And every single female I, Remember them, I remember their essence. You know, even before I came, I had a, we have a grand reveal at six weeks, and I hear the stories of how they were feeling before their body makeover and how they're feeling now. Life change, body, you know, feeling so amazing. Can't walk from road dock because even the garbage <laughs> man run after me. <laughs> like, you know, how's he want to come out? With me? Every minute, how's he want to go out? No. And it's just like, just the best job ever. Yeah. Just the saving. And, and you know, the women take it seriously too. They take the transformation seriously. We do a lot of inner work with them too. A lot of care, a lot of love, a lot of protection, a lot of connection. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of mental health. A lot of mental health. Therapy. Therapy. And, yeah, yeah. Indirectly. And yes. staff is taught to do that. You know, um, our high incidence of childhood rape impacts my job tremendously. Because mm -hmm. um, a part of the, 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 the sedation that we give to clients is a medication that can reveal memories really? that you, you may not have even known you hid. And so we have a safe space for that to ever happen. Wow. And in the post-op, we get help for our clients and they talk about it because Rape always damages your sense mm -hmm. of self and your body mm -hmm. image and how you see yourself in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And because more of them feel like the bottom and the waistline, yeah, have to help them to. You want them to love everything. You want them to love everything, you um, know what I mean? And you sit in the chair as someone who does that. Um, cosmetic medicine was always your passion. And always. you do know. You, yeah. you went from Anti-aging. 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 Because um, when I had menopause at 23, my, um, the doctor who diagnosed me, he, he's like, ho, 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 I'm more of a woman than you. You know, when he looked oh, at my no, blood test, he made it seem good. 
spirit yeah, sex. No, so. no, no funny doctor, sir. It doesn't. Well, actually, 20 years ago, it was funny because I had zero estrogen. And um, my boyfriend at the time, which I further married and divorced, um, yes, um, <laughs> asked, ask, um, so where do we go from here? You know, I said, well, let me just put it say you're going to age 10 times faster than everybody else. You're going to have to just take care of yourself and hopefully you live to 50. Wow. And then, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was very positive, Simone. Wow. <laughs> wow. Which is, I guess that was a listening home not to be a doctor for you. <laughs> Um, well, clearly you read, she lived beyond 50 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's here to tell it. And she looks more better than most 23 year olds I know Thank at you. this point. Thank so you. the irony is, um, is too interesting. Your work. spirituality mm -hmm. comes from being raised in a Christian church, Pe Pentecostal Christian. Yes. Um, uh, and, and by the time you were 15, you were raised in such a strict environment. You decided I'm, I'm going to go out and see the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm not staying here. You made up your mind you were leaving Jamaica. Yes. And you made it happen. Yes. I s secretly applied for the, an exchange program. I was tired from high school. I just did too much. I was just too enough, as everybody <laughs> used to call me. <laughs> head girl, student was the president, head of UNESCO. Like, who is the head of UNESCO and 4 each club all at once, you know? And I was just exhausted. Did 11 subjects um, at fifth form, and it was a lot. And I told my parents, listen, I'm going to take a break. I don't know where in the world I'm going to end up, but I'm gone. Mm -hmm. And my parents said no. So I sat them down and kindly informed them that I don't think they had a choice. Oh, is that right? Look at because you. Because <laughs> I, I, I worked every summer waiting tables um, in Brooklyn. So I, I always had money. Yes. Yes. So I Vex had money. money. I always had Vex money. So I was like, Mommy, I have the plane to fear. I mean, I'm getting some pocket money from you, but I was like, Mommy, I'll soon come back. Mm -hmm. I'll soon come back. But and did I, it take six months to call the people when you left? No, it, uh, there were no phones at that time. I wrote a letter. The letter took six months to get to Jamaica. Your poor mother nearly lose her mind. My Lord. Why are you like Every that? Christmas she tells us she cried for the entire oh, six months. Dark. But I thought the letter was, had reached and they just weren't writing me back because they were still like mm, upset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I learned that it took We're going to talk when we come yeah. back from this break about why anti-aging is so important to you and what you go through in your practice. But I want, to, I want to acknowledge the significance of the dress you are wearing. Yes, today. Mama. Um, tell me about the dress and why it is important and why you felt important to wear it for this occasion. First of all, it's you. Oh. And you're important to me. Oh. Yeah, from a long time, Thank right? You. Yeah. And um, this dress, I had to do my Miss Universe elimination on camera because I had to travel for work. And uh, I drove 40 miles. I, 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 I told ChatGP my life story. Oh, I love ChatGPT. <laughs> and I said, could you please find me a Miss Universe dress store? And ChatGP gave me one option. And I called them, and when I called them, like the Miss Universes of Miss USAs were in the store, like, okay, hold on a minute. She said, come and get this dress. And I went, she saw me, okay, I've got the perfect dress for you, la, 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 la. The rest was history. It's fabulous. Yes, it's, and, and yeah, you, it's lovely. And you make it look good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Dark so I said, I'm coming to Sim, Sim yeah. Soul, so let me represent, let me turn up. And represent you. You make me you want to go home. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll be right back. Um, we're definitely deep, deeper with Doc yes. right after this. <laughs> All right, folks, we're back with Doc. Um, and what you do, Doc, is so much more than medicine. It, it heals so many different parts of the body. Um, for women who come in with all sorts of stories, you have women, yes. you spoke of childhood rape earlier. Yeah. There are women who come in with relationship issues. Correct. But you make it very clear to them that you can't fix those. Cannot. <laughs> right? Cannot. Something is broken there at a deeper level, no matter what they do Correct. to their bodies. Correct. That will never heal. And you can speak with some authority to that because you've been Absolutely. through your own situation. Correct. Um, you, you got divorced after 19, 19, 19 years. years. Uh -huh. um, you just say one day, God just say. Yeah. Like when I say, May 70 is the day when you're yes. there. After 19 years. 19 years. Um, I, I, I knew I should have left earlier. Um, I knew my child that was no longer in love with me. I knew it. But you know, you said as you a, think he fell out of love at year twelve. 
Yeah. So why did you stay sure. around seven million? Um, my parents, go figure. My father, he's a reverend, mommy's a reverend, they're like encouraging and it, it gets better. And daddy told me, oh, you know, men, we usually take long to mature. That's what daddy said. I said, daddy, how long? <laughs> daddy, said, daddy said, Lord, Sandra, all up to 20 years. He told me that. My father told me that year 12. And I was like, oh, okay, let me hang out till year 20. Yeah. But year 19, it was too much. I remember the moment I knew that this was it when derogatory terms were thrown at me that I think no human female should hear. And I realized, okay, it's gone, it's done. But also your yeah. Paris trip was quite revelatory. Yes. 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 You were supposed to have met your hubby in Paris. Oh, yes. And I was called a couple of days before that there was something that came up. prevented that, mm -hmm. something that came up. But I noticed that a couple of days later, he was in Paris. And I was like, what are you doing in Paris? And I cancel my flight and all these things. And those times you don't get refunds, Simone, okay? <laughs> you know, only to find out that he actually went to Paris with somebody else, which I found out years after. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing. But Doc, you know, you told me on the phone. Mm -hmm. You say you don't remember one bun free day in your 90s. I don't. No, honest to God, you don't remember one bone-free day? Not one, not one so bone-free day. Not one. Yeah. But you but, stuck it out because... But um, I didn't know of many of the... Ah. Do you understand? But in retrospect, when all the story came out, I didn't have one bone-free day. I mean, like, I always knew there was something off, you know, the late nights and stuff like that. But I never had one, even my wedding day. No way, Dr. Way. Sway, we do way, not. Simone. Way? Way. Even the morning of my wedding day. But this I found out years ago. Even the what morning that, of my wedding day. What does that do to you when you find out? Or oh, by that time you had already gone, so it didn't matter. You gave yourself one day to cry. Yeah, one, one full day. day. And I bawled the entire day. On the roadside. I bawled at my sister's house, Lee's flat. I sat on the sidewalk and I said, Jesus, make somebody stop and... Pat me on the back or Nobody something. Did. I'm sitting on there, I'm a balling and small. On the roadside? On the roadside. You know, when you're going to bleed, we turn to the right at the corner and care past me up and down and not one. Somebody stop me and scrape me up off and say, What happened to you? And wipe off your eyes. <laughs> All right, Mr. All right, let me get up. Got the ball in now. Help. And then after that one day of crying, I what you did the next day? Went to blew work. my mind. Not only did you go to work, yeah. you, you wrote a list of what you wanted in your next partner? Yes. But, but how? Because, you know, I'm a marine type of girl. I like, I like one burners. I like... So having been one. burnt, you didn't even like say, this is not for me. No, you because I didn't own it. Ah. I didn't own it. Because it was happening, it happens to so many women around the world and men too, can we add that? Yes. That I didn't take it personally. I just said, okay, well, let me, let me go find mine then. And I said, this time I'm going to write on what I need for what in the next write? month. I, I wrote tall, handsome, yes. fit, um, well endowed. <coughs> and um, you! God and bless you. you. Yes. <laughs> kind, hardworking, um, protective, um, and a few other things in mm -hmm. terms of being a gentleman. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, you know, love me more than I love myself. Yeah. And I mean, one day I'm going to show him the list, but he really, I don't know why, but. <sighs> it's that kind of love that gets you weepy, weepy, weepy. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's something to being intentional because. Yeah. Not only did you train your mind and write your list. Yeah. But you prepared yourself in a way that was. I don't know anybody who's ever done that. Like you stripped yourself yeah. down to your <clears throat> core. Core. What did you do? I changed my entire life. Um, even physically, I stopped wearing makeup all my head. That's stopped when you cut jewelry. the hair off? That's when I cut the hair you off. Stop wearing jewelry? Stop wearing jewelry, makeup, toes, Celeb nails, celibacy for everything. Mm -hmm. Celibacy for a year. And I was like, you know, my next husband is going to love me. Beer, 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 <laughs> as, as they come. And, you know, I committed more to to the act of just being grateful every day to be alive and um, meditating, thanking God for all my traumas 
and what they have taught me and read a lot. I read a lot. Oh my God, that year I read so many books, listened to so many podcasts. Mm -hmm. I still do. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I'm going to just love me. I divorced from friends that weren't really friends. Mm -hmm. and I, You audited your life. And yeah, you know. audited my life. I clean shop. Mm -hmm. And there was one point where I felt that the, the only person, the persons that were in my universe were my parents. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, they were the only persons. And I, and I loved it because I felt clean. I felt pure. I felt uninterrupted. You know, and anchored. And, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and balanced. Mm -hmm. And then I, I looked around me and I looked at my values and how I wanted my life to be. And then I started choosing friends. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, I started re-engaging mm -hmm. one by one. But look what came into your life after that. Yeah. That's instructive for all of us folks, yeah. I think. Intentional, yeah. when you're intentional. You have to be intentional. Things happen. We have more with Doc on the other side. Soon come. Back with Dr. Sandra Swaybe on this side, and we're talking to her about the second time around being better than the first time. Um, there's a lesson in there for all of us as well. Five years into your second marriage, mm -hmm. you are very happy. Yes. But it's work. A lot of work. Mm -hmm. and, the f and, and the important thing is that you said after the first marriage, you actually had to stop and introspect to see what yes. you... Correct. What part you had played? Correct. In the because and I you did realize play some things about yourself. Yeah, yeah. I realized I wasn't nurturing as I needed to be, and I now believe that a very important part of the female in relationships is to actually nurture their partner. And I was very uh, career driven, and I thought that that could sustain everything else. It didn't, mm -hmm. and I ignored. I ignored the red signs. I ignore the red flags. Red flag, sorry. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I was as attentive as I should have been. That's just the truth. I look at it, everybody goes, oh, you're a good wife. No, I wasn't that good a wife. <laughs> like, That's very self-aware. I wasn't, no, yeah. I wasn't great. But no, you are? No, no, I think I am becoming a great wife. Mm -hmm. um, it's a I, job, you know. Yes, it's yeah. a job. I have to get up every day and think, you know, how can I serve mm -hmm. my love, you know? And I, I know he thinks the same. Mm -hmm. And I have to be humble, respectful of his position in relationship. Um, he's my leader. He's my counselor. I have to submit mm -hmm. when I need to submit. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm always there for him. And he's always there for Fantastic. me. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and, you've, and you've needed help through some tough times. You've been through yes. some stuff. Yes. Um, miscarriages among them? Yeah. Uh, God bless Tiffany, your adopted God bless daughter. Tiffany, adopted you... Many miscarriages I decided to adopt. Yeah. Um, the in vitro and all these things were, because I was in premature ovarian failure, which right. is menopause, that was right. so challenging. I adopted my daughter. She's 20 this year. Mm -hmm. And it has been an amazing experience to just to be, you know, I'm glad I just have one. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm scratching my head right now. Because I'm telling you, I told her yesterday, she's, she's one, she's not like five in one. I know. And we needed each other. Yeah. Like I, I got her at three weeks old and I'm so happy she came into my life. And I'm, I'm happy that I am in her life because we, you know, we lift each other up yeah. when, we, when we need to be lifted up. Let's talk about that time mm. in 2023 when you mm. needed lifting up. Yeah. Maybe also physically. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because you woke up one morning and something in your body didn't feel so right. Actually, it was side. more dramatic. Yeah, okay. I started having tremendous hot flashes. Oh, okay. Like my body on fire and then I started to cool off. Then I started with the mood swings and, you know, my private parts weren't function, wasn't functioning correctly. And I keep going to doctors. I'm like, listen, I think I'm in menopause. And I was like, sure. Med school stress that's in your when house. you were 2023. Yeah, that's, this that's, that's 20, when I was 23. This is 2023 now I'm carrying you to when you woke up. Oh, you mean, yes. oh, when I, after my 50th birthday. After your 50th birthday. Oh, my God. Gift. I woke up, Simone, and I couldn't move the left side of my body. That's what we're talking mm -hmm. about, right? And I was like, okay, so this must be stress. And I prayed and I meditated, felt a little better. Went to do surgery. I had to sit down like about a dozen 
15 times, as I know, this feels a little bit more than stress. Because, like, my left hand was not going and my left leg kept on, you know, doubling underneath me. And I say, you know what, it feels like it's coming from my head. Because all of a sudden, I became aware of the right side of my brain. And, I mean, you don't feel your brain. No. You know. No. I became aware of the right side of my brain. And I said, you know what, let me go do an MRI. I did an MRI. Uh, my girlfriend did the MRI. And... Uh, um, she didn't read the, the, the films, uh, her staff did, and it said I had a right temporal lobe infarct, a.k.a. for a stroke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. I'm like, stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Mm -hmm. So I called my girlfriend, I said, could you look at those films for me, please? And she looked and she said, Jesus, Poppins. Poppins, because we went to UWE together. Mm -hmm. Um, Seacole. And she said, yes, you have a stroke, girl. Oh, if you have stroke. That's what she was saying, because you're like Miss Fitness, Miss Eat Right. And I call, you know, thinking about the medicine of it. I call a cardiologist friend of mine, and he said, all right, come. And we did something called a bubble test, echo bubble test, and realized that there was a huge hole in my heart that I was born with. Congenital Yeah, heart. congenital. That you knew nothing of. That I knew nothing of. Well, you know, over the years, I have like a hard things here and there, but nobody really did that particular test. And it was like sending clots to my brain all my life, oh apparently. My. God. And he says, it's a good thing that I had a stroke significant enough that I felt it because most people will have that defect and have small strokes and really um, pass from dementia or Alzheimer's because of mini strokes. So it's a good thing I got it fixed straight away. So the stroke was a blessing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It, because I had to re... Well, you get up with your left side life. now work and you go out work, go surgery on people. It was tough. No, it, it's, not, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not as easy as it sounds. What was like, kind of strength do you have? It, I, you know, I just think I must just tough out everything. I always say to myself, everything, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's gonna, don't worry. Tough times always pass. Tough times always pass. Because uh, at the time I was working a lot. Yeah. You know? Um... I said, you know, tough times always pass. And I just stuck it out, stuck it out, deep breathe, and I prayed. I, I don't know. And, and then coming from my, the history of having health problems before and just building up after the divorce. I mean, I was broke after my divorce. I didn't have a penny. And just going from not be, going into the supermarket, you know, you go to the supermarket, a debit card declined. declined? <laughs> that's, that's what I didn't know. You don't have any money with a debit yes, card declined. That's a clear indication. <laughs> I like how you laugh now. I, I think this is instructive, you know, because sometimes you, <laughs> you're at a place in your life where you don't think you'll ever get past. And I promise you, mm -hmm. there's one day you're going to look back. Yeah. Just like that, and yeah. you're going to be able to laugh yeah. about it if you just stick it out. Oh, that, that health scare, those two, the stroke, mm -hmm. the heart issue, mm -hmm. made you decide that you were going to squeeze every single ounce out of life that every you single could squeeze off every of that. single every, every single. single listen i was just so happy to be alive and you know what nothing mattered after that like it's it's so liberating not to be interested in what people think about me <laughs> not to care what you not that i don't care what people say but like the only voice that really matters to me is that the voice of god um, then comes the voice of my husband, and then comes the voice of myself and my husband. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm always introspecting. I, I am totally, fantastically happy with being imperfect. I have faults, I, 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 have, I do errors, you know, and I make up for it, and I forgive myself, and move on, I give myself a lot of grace. You know, I stay out of people's business, and I think my purpose, one of my purposes is just to be kind to my fellow human beings mm -hmm. and show them love in ways that I can. And it's very liberating. Like you're, you come alive, you're like, listen, this is not that serious like you're, you're saying it. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing come, is serious. When we come back, we're going to talk about yes. how a part of extricating more out of life led you to pageantry and that yes. dream that you um, had held and, and never thought you'd be able to do. Um, and just know how the rest of your life is being wonderfully lived. Yeah, she's fabulous. <laughs> we have more with her on Just like side. you. <laughs> <laughs>
I um, did. I just want you to know that you're, I think you said you're, I think you're, it was amazing. Very, I've it was very amazing. complimentary. Yes. And when I looked at the message from a year ago, and I yes. said, thank you so much, Doc. And here we are. Yes, yes. Like I did send you that message. I think I saw your show and I just loved how you popped through the TV. And I said, let me show you some love. Let me send you some love. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I mean, yeah. I mean, we weren't friends or anything, no. but I had you know for some yeah, reason, yeah, and I sent yeah. you the message. I book it up, and I was like, oh my god, yeah. God just is amazing. Yeah. I know how He works. So pageantry, yes. Here you are at fifty-two this year, mm -hmm. stepping in with these young women. Yes, um, but emerging a bright light, a Thank great you. connector of Thank persons you. in that Thank pageant. You. Thank you. Outside of learning how to walk and mm -hmm. adjust your posture and so, so, yeah. so, what did that pageant do for you? You know, it actually built a part of my self-esteem that I didn't know needed really? building. Really? There was more that could build? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I became more aware of, of, of my body, my body positioning, how I sit, stuff like that. But apart from that, I've never spent such a prolonged period of time with a large group of young women. And that was a revelation to me, just connecting with them, just enjoying their presence, how amazing they are, entrepreneurs, intellectual, lawyers, doctors. Um, I felt really connected in that pattern. Mm -hmm. I felt really connected. And based on how I re related with the girls, it sort of reinforced the fact that, you know, I'm here for people. Mm -hmm. I'm here for people and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I loved it. I love every minute of it. No regrets. None at all. Also, no regrets about how you've been treating your own body. I mean, we look at you. It is clear you work out. Yes. Clear. <laughs> but you also say you are unapologetic about the fact that you, in the same way you maintain your vehicle and yeah. service your vehicle, mm -hmm. you maintain God's creation. Of course. So you do what needs to be done, which includes mm -hmm. a little Botox every three months, mm -hmm. breast lifting. Mm -hmm. Waist, surgical like, breast lifting, Thank snatching. You. Mm -hmm. What else? What else do you do? Then? <laughs> skin, PRP, skin no, boosters, PRP micro is, needling, platelet rich plasma. Anything that needs to fix. Anything that needs to fix. Everything. Everything. Anything that needs to touch up. And for the person watching who has said, but this lady don't know she's 52. What? What she? No, I don't know nothing. Been talking. Yes. I don't know nothing. No, but there are people who will say, <laughs> why are you messing with? You know, God's creation, and you're saying, I'm enhancing. Yeah, because at the end of the day, people say God's creation, but at, when we had the interruption of, you know, the Garden of Eden, let's forget about that mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. We now know that God is not the only person that has a hand in the creation of man and influencing what happens. So I always believe that God's purpose source is beauty, yeah. dynamism, grace, of course, femininity, if, you know, if you're a woman. And I think we should always work on that. Be, always be the best version of ourselves. Women over 50, when they come to get enhanced, it's, it's just such a dark consultation. Because either really? the, their husband, yeah, their, their mother telling them that they must go sit down into a howl, <laughs> or the sisters, or the boyfriend or the husband. It's, all, it's such, always such a dark conversation. And they come to the consultation, say, doc, nobody knows I'm here. You know, sometimes you know, I have to be plotting, you know, how they're going to hide. I mean, it's, it's very, very dramatic. And body enhancement has been around in first world countries for a lifetime and other countries too. And persons look in the mirror every day, Simone, and say, I H A T E, how I look. They say that, you know. You don't call the word. Why you don't call Why you spell it? You know. You don't like it. I, I don't like that word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's such a powerful word. Mm -hmm. Such a powerful word, right? And whenever they say that, you may say, no. Before, you, before I do anything with you, you have to start loving your body. And I point out some of the great things that they have. Even today I was in a consultation. I said, you're already so beautiful. When I'm finished with you, you're going to look like a goddess. Mm. But, you know, just know that you're beautiful from now. And then we just add on to it, you know? Um, it is a, a road that not many women in Jamaica now would like to travel. Um, so for example, when they come for facial enhancement, you know, they don't want anybody to know because they don't. I'm like, but it's a shame and a stigma. You, because people will say things and you have to be strong about what you want, where you're going to go, you know, in life. And you have to know that you have to uh, listen. I want to look in the mirror and just 
Lobo Miluki. You think you are the hottest I do. thing on the face. I do. I do. You, I you so just, there's nobody, <laughs> there's nobody as beautiful as you are. I think so. That's what I believe. Yeah. And it's, it's not about, you know, it's just the humility that I'm a creation of God. And, and that must be the most beautiful thing. When I, when I think of my relationship with God, I'm, I'm, it makes me happy. Mm. It makes me happy because I know he has my back and he created me and he has brought me today. And I just bask in his glory and how beautiful he made all of mm -hmm. us, including me. Mm -hmm. So I can't So when wrong. you look in the mirror, tell me yeah. what you see. I, like gorgeous. <laughs> Like gorgeous, like the sunrise over my head <laughs> in the mornings. <laughs> I don't know. And my husband goes, "Yes, you're beautiful. Yes, <laughs> <Her role laughs> is a yeah. you're yes. both bald. Yes, yes. You, yes. You, did you want a bald man? Um, you know, I didn't. Okay. I didn't put bald on the list. But he wanted. He loves a bald-headed woman. He loved from he was in his twenties. I he mean, a bald-headed woman. Wow. I was like, babe, like who puts that on their to-do list? <sighs> And, um, <laughs> and when he met me, you know, he almost never, you know, never happened, but he loved, and he shaves my head. Oh. Sometimes when I travel, I shave my head, but he taught me how to shave my head properly. Cause he used to shave and get bumps, but now it's just mm -hmm. two bald mm -hmm. people. You guys are, it's, it's a beautiful love story. I think so too. And, and your journey with yourself is also a beautiful love yes. story. Yes. Thank God for the people who've been around you who've helped yes. you to make it happen. Yes. Go ahead, Laura, run the good vibes. Hey, Doc, surprise. Hi, Doc, I just want to say how much I appreciate and I love you, admire everything that you do. I admire the fact that you take time out to pour into your workers and also your clients. And I just want to say that I admire your resilience. I admire the fact that you also take time out to focus on your personal care. And of course, that's one of the major reasons why you look so fit and fabulous at your current age. And I want to tell you big up for that. And also, I admire how much you also pour into your career. It really inspires me as a young professional. So we just wanted to remind you that you're a big deal. You're um, royal. Yeah, big up yourself. We love you. Hey, Sandra. Just stopping by quickly to give you the flowers that you truly deserve. You're an amazing woman, an amazing wife, an amazing friend, an amazing mother, an amazing doctor. You're the true definition of female empowerment and motivation. Nobody can help just to feel your energy when they are in your presence. And I just want to encourage you to keep keep that personality, keep that light shining, keep being that motivation for, for everybody. And I know you're going to excel in anything that you do. I love you dearly. I wish you all the best. This is your dear friend, Tiffany, and I just wanted to take a moment to tell you how incredibly proud I am of you your strength, your passion and dedication to everything you do leaves me in such awe. Watching you navigate life with such grace and enthusiasm is truly inspiring. I admire your unwavering commitment to your dreams and the way you bring so much energy and positivity to every aspect of your life. Our friendship means the world to me your support and the joy you bring into my life are irreplaceable. I am deeply grateful for our bond and cherish every moment that we spend together. Thank you for being such a remarkable friend and human being and for letting me be a part of your journey. Love you to the moon and beyond. Hi goddess. What an amazing journey. From our days when we met on the Guild of Undergrad, went through the issues with your sister, and now come to see you as this professional who dealing with human, especially feminine beauty, it has been an amazing journey. And I've been so proud of you. I have seen you grow and exude this positive 
vibration about yourself and others and you're teaching others. You took on Jamaica going into the Miss Universe and you're an amazing woman, Sandra. You know I am one of your biggest fans. You see my WhatsApp, I message you all along and I'm just here with you, prodding you on. Love you lot, Sandra. Just continue to be the woman you are. Continue to just shine. You know I'm here for you in your corner. Sandra, congratulations. Uh, you're always on the move. You are such a progressive girl. As a matter of fact, from you were a child, we watch you growing and excelling. Love you so much. God bless you and you keep going. Sandra, I love you dearly. Keep on going. And I know that one day you will reach the highest point in life. God bless you. Hi, Mommy. I just wanted to let you know how proud I am of you. You worked really hard and you've done a lot for me and you've done a lot for all the people around you. And I don't think it's talked about enough, you know. And I hope that you are happy in all aspects of life. I hope that you find joy at all times and I just hope that you continue to feel the blessings that you deserve, the things that you deserve, be around the people that you deserve to be around with all that you've done throughout life, you know, all your accomplishments, everything. I love you. I really appreciate you and I hope you know that I will be here for you at all times. I really love you. On top of the world looking down on creation and the only explanation I can find is the love that I've found ever since you've been around. Your love's put me at the top of the world. Sandra Swaby, my love, my heartbeat. I want to take this moment to express how much you mean to me. You are more than a wife. You are my mother, my father, my best friend. Thank you for being a part of my life and for having me along this part of your life, this part of your journey. I love you, darling. You guys are insane! That's a lovely man. <laughs> Thank you, Simone. Really Thank you. Really emotional watching yes. that message. Yes. And your daughter. Yes. You know when our kids can say, Mommy, we wish you joy. Yes. Um, and happiness yes. and being around the right people. There's something yes. so special. Yeah, because she's been there thick and thin when I, I was not around the right people sometimes and moments when I was not turning up as the best version of myself, neither for myself nor her, but we worked through it, worked through it yeah. and still working through it. It's a work in progress. Yes, we all every day. Our relationships, every day. our interactions. Every day. Ourselves. Yeah, every day. Work. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I learned something today. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so happy that every day I'm learning something new. And I want people to just be open to understand the fact that every day is an opportunity to elevate. To elevate your mindset, to elevate the way you look, to elevate your bank account, <laughs> to elevate, elevate something. The way you think about life. I, I just wish everybody understood that. It's just okay to be them. Let's bring it home yes. for them when we do this last segment. We'll yes. take our, our last break. We'll come right back. All right, we're back to lead the show with Doc. Um, Doc, you say your life's journey has taught you that fear is just a figment of your imagination. And just so you live not according to others' expectations or opinions or... And I think about all the women who watch your show, our audience is mostly female, who are mm -hmm. stuck in that vortex of fear. Yes. And other people's opinions of them. Yes. And, yes. Um, I would love for you to just give a word to those women who are watching. Those opinions don't matter. It, they seriously don't. And you have to live based on the conversation you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you need to have a conversation with your therapist, do that too. 
Because I have what a therapist. What does that conversation with yourself look like? Um, what is the truth? You're always seeking the truth, not the facts, the truth. What exactly is happening? This, what I'm feeling, where does it come from? From a good place, from not so good place? What is my motivation? Mm -hmm. Did I do the right thing? Mm. You have to have some deep, honest conversation with, your, with yourself and understand that if you've made an error, it does not mean that you are a person of error. It means that that was an action. Mm -hmm. That was an event. It doesn't define you. It doesn't define you. It does not define you. Your failures don't define you. You know, the wrong bangs don't ref define mm -hmm. you. When people break up with you, that it's doesn't define you either. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're not worthy of love, worthy of, worthy of care, worthy of magnificence and glory. Mm -hmm. What it means is that that season has passed mm -hmm. and you need to welcome the next season. Absolutely. Take the lessons. Take the lessons. Take again. the lessons. And, Take and, the lessons. and those deep discussions will happen with your therapist as well. Yes. You say, so you recommend therapy. Oh, yes. Yeah. I've, I've, I've had a therapist for many, many, many years. And even to, just the call to talk about absolutely nothing. nothing. Because um, what I realize is that sometimes I don't have that third party vision on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I can be a little stubborn sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I need that third party intervention to say, hey boy, I don't think that was the best thing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would like to live um, truthfully to myself. Yes. So that anything that happens to me or anything I do, I own it. We don't say, oh, is, is him or she make me do it. No. I did it. I chose to do it. Mm -hmm. It's my decision. This, this is the, these are the consequences. I am willing to accept and I'm going to move on. You say you're at a point in your life now where you feel like you're your most humble. Yes. Most, I mean, even with most. all these accolades, you feel yeah. like this is the part where you're most, most. humble. Yeah, because I'm just a girl. <laughs> like, I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl, yeah, you know, I'm just a girl and I love it. I love that I'm just a girl. I love that when I, I can relate to my clients and mm -hmm. they can relate to me. I love that uh, my friends think I'm the bee's knees mm -hmm. <laughs> and we chat and have fun. And I, and I love that, you know, I got this health scare and I'm okay now. And I love the beauty in people and I love that I'm, I, I, I don't get it right all the time, and I need advice, and I need help, you know, and I'm, all I don't I want to... I love what you said yeah. so much. Yeah. I'm just a girl. Yeah. I just love that. Yeah, that's all. Ordinary, extraordinary, yeah. ordinary. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I try to fight against that on social media, so, so to yes, speak. Yes, yes. Like, I, I don't put on, you know, like I don't wear makeup, and I don't put on, I just turn up as I am. Mm -hmm. I don't stage anything. <laughs> no, mm -hmm. like, because I don't want people to think that I'm grandiose. Because I don't live a grandiose, I mean, I live an amazing, fabulous, magical life. But I don't, you know, it's very simple. Yes. Simple very simple. Yeah. Very simple. And there's not, it's, you just have to just come into your own and accept who God has made you to be yeah. and live that truth. You know, this next for this girl, she wants to maybe do some life coaching or some... We know there are big things on the horizon because whatever yes. it is she decides to do, yes. it's going to be done. Yes, <laughs> it shall like that. be done. Doc, what a great honor and joy to honor have was you mine. In this honor day. was mine for thank sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. Ah, okay. Let's lead the show. She does her affirmations at work. Yes. I do mine at work too. So let's do it yes. here because this is my work, right? Yes. Okay, here we go. So depending on the ailments of your life, your prescription is going to be different. But there is absolutely no doubt that self-love is the best medicine. And the best thing about it, it's absolutely free to attain. But very costly if you lose it. It takes time to administer. And it's done in small and very consistent doses. And you needn't be a professional to get it right. You just need to be intentional and purposeful. And when it starts to work, every other part of your body will feel it. Things will start to feel like it's all coming together and you'll start to feel more whole. But the work has to start right here in your soul. So tonight we are affirming, I commit to daily doses of self-love 
to save my mind, my body, and my soul. That is our soul food. Thank you, Doc. And our show for this evening. Thank you for watching, everybody. We're back next week with another story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, every blessing. And please remember to count your blessings. Night, everyone.